I'd like to do a little video today on what's called the classic triad of aortic stenosis. The classic triad being angina, exertional syncope, and symptoms of congestive heart failure. I'll talk a little bit about the pathophysiology as to why each of these three pieces of the triad happen uh, when you have a patient with aortic stenosis. So with angina, we can reckon back to our uh, determinants of oxygen supply to the myocardium and oxygen demand and figure out why in aortic stenosis there's an imbalance. So we get a decrease in myocardial oxygen supply with aortic stenosis because the pressure inside the left ventricle during systole and diastole is going to increase as it, the heart is pumping against that uh, excess obstruction or that fixed obstruction that is the aortic stenosis. So you're going to have a decrease in the coronary perfusion gradient. Coronary perfusion gradient, which is a major determinant of myocardial oxygen supply. On the other side, in chronic aortic stenosis, you're going to get an increase in muscle mass, which is going to consume more oxygen. And as well, you've got an increase in afterload with the fixed obstruction. So that's going to result in increased wall stress, which, as we know, according to the law of Laplace, is a determinant of myocardial oxygen demand. So in summary, you're going to have a decreased supply, increase in demand. That's an imbalance that can result in angina. All right. From an exertional syncope point of view, we can go back to our basic equation for perfusion. knowing that it's directly proportional to cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. So when somebody's exerting themselves, this systemic vascular resistance is going to go down due to peripheral vasodilation to get blood flow to the muscles. And so in order to maintain perfusion, you would expect the cardiac output to increase. So with an increase in contractility, increase in stroke volume, uh, increase in heart rate that we experience when we exercise. The problem is with a fixed obstruction from the aortic stenosis, this cardiac output cannot compensate. So you cannot actually increase your cardiac output. So you have a drop in SVR and you have a CO, uh, cardiac output that remains the same equals a drop in Q which leads to syncope. Now let's talk about congestive heart failure. And this is more of a late progressive issue with aortic stenosis. So at first, the left ventricle is able to compensate by accepting larger volumes. The problem is, is as, this le as the left ventricle hypertrophies with progression of the disease, the compliance decreases and you get increased end diastolic pressure. And that's translated back to the left atrium and the pulmonary circulation. Which equals CHF symptoms. And these these are actually somewhat correlated with disease progression and survival. So once you have symptoms of angina with aortic stenosis, you have a mean survival of five years, or sorry, a median survival of five years with exertional syncope, it's three years. By the time you get to congestive heart failure symptoms, it's two years. That's known as the 5-3-2 rule. So uh, hopefully that explains uh, a little bit about the classic triad of aortic stenosis.